What up, y'all? It's the homie Dame. And this is like an almond biscotti thing. It's sweet. I think it's got like some salted caramel in it. I did not cook this, but someone somewhere did. And because of their efforts, I get to enjoy this tasty little treat. Stale. Cooking from scratch is one of the great joys in life, and the new Studio Trigger anime Delicious in Dungeon does a perfect job of capturing that charm. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Delicious in Dungeon, a show that I've been looking forward to for a long ass time. Basically just like a year, but you know. Delicious in Dungeon or Dungeon Meshi is a seinen manga series written and illustrated by Ryoko Kui. And now obviously it's been adapted into a studio trigger anime like I mentioned before. Now if you watch this channel, you could probably guess why I was so excited for this anime. It's because I am a certified card carrying studio trigger dick rider. But what I am not a dick rider of is Netflix, which is unfortunately where I have to go to watch this show, but whatever. But yeah, this is gonna be a reaction highlight compilation of episodes two through five of the anime. If you wanna see my reaction to episode one, you can check out this video here. Once we get a bit deeper into the season, I'll drop another video with some of my more detailed thoughts on the show, but for now, enjoy these reaction commentary highlights. And as always, if you wanna see the full length uncut reactions, you can check out my Patreon. Oh, let's see this opening, which I think I already did see it, but. Everybody has noses in this anime. The opening is pretty cool. I, I like it. The song's like... The song's fine. I wish the whole song was more like this little, little jig part right here. <laughs> Wait, I feel like she's gonna be like the goat straight man for the series. She's like Aqua, but if Aqua was the straight man in Konosuba. Oh, hell no. They made that shit with polymerization. Her ears are not as... Po like, Free Ren got pointier ears. She got more like round ears. Interesting. Okay. Nah, this is fire. That's what the kids call peak. Hey, this is good advice for all of y'all in real life. Who says anime can't teach you things? Y'all lock in, take care of yourselves, drink some water, get your eight or eight or nine hours of sleep. Damn, cracked tailbone, shattered spine, fractured pelvis. It's over for her. You're gonna have to carry her. Imagine they eat her. She's wounded. It's over for her. Let's just cook her. Oh yeah, I forgot that was the goal of their mission. They're literally on a rescue mission and they're out here like, well, let's take some time to cook up a basilisk. Her ears like change in size depending on the scene. Like here they're long. Now they're kind of differently shaped here. I guess they look longer from the side. Yeah, now they look thinner. Maybe if it's a different angle, different. I need to do some research, y'all. I consider myself an expert on elf ears. Damn. What spell slot you use to cast that? Level two? Or oh, that looked like a cantrip. <laughs> Wait, she's like the best character, dude. He's already getting to cooking. <laughs> this is the realest dude. He's like, y'all can have your little character moment. Her face is it? Look at her face. Oh, man, that looks good. Oh, a nice omelet. Stop playing with me, man. Stop playing with me. That looks good. This Looney Tunes ending. If the episode ended there, this would have been the greatest show of all time. Hey, okay. Me playing Connect Four? Not Connect Four. What the fuck am I thinking? Twister. What the fuck? I said Connect Four, bro. 
But what would that taste like, though? They have to try it eventually, right? Is that gonna happen at any point in this story? Are they gonna eat, like, a sentient creature? Are they gonna cook up this dwarf? Once Laois or whatever, once his knowledge in cooking surpasses his, they're like, we don't need you anymore. We're gonna roast you. And I don't mean, like, in a rap battle. The comedy in this show is executed really well. Oh, he's a thousand percent Asian, because that's some Asian shit, bro. Have you ever been to, like, a pho restaurant? where the bowl is like 10,000 degrees boiling hot, but the waiter brings it out with their thumb in the bowl, like, here's your food, head ass. Like, he's Asian a thousand percent. <laughs> this is such a trigger anime, bro. Did you see how they all looked just then? This is... a thousand percent a, tr a studio trigger production. Gold strippers? <laughs> Let me not say anything. Oh no, my favorite character. Oh, this is like um, the beginning of Goblin Slayer. Rookie adventurers getting caught in uh, in over their heads. Dude, no, look at the art style. Right? This is this episode particularly looks so trigger. It's not even funny. Oh my god, it's Griffith. Oh, no, it's uh, the Hound from Game of Thrones. This episode got a, a lot of action in it, okay. And it looks good, too. I mean, like I said, it's, hey, it's Trigger. The style is so distinctive, I'm sure. Like, if you've ever watched any Trigger anime, you probably can see what I'm seeing, too. Oh, that is the most Trigger-looking thing I've ever seen in my entire existence. Okay, Senshi, he got his, uh, he got his, uh, dwarf pussy all out. Damn, we need you on the, um, on the bears, bro. You doing tackles like that? We need you out there protecting Justin Fields. That looked really smooth animation-wise. So does this. Trigger is so undefeated, bro. I'm... I'm glazing right now. Yeah, I'm in full glaze mode right now. I'm not gonna hold you. I'm about to say, write that down. Publish that to Scientific American. Okay, stir fry. I was about to say, it's just, it looks just like clams or mussels or something. Or oysters, I mean. Like fried oysters hit, man. Oh, hell no. So you're telling me that was secretly fan service? We we're seeing mollusk fan service. Look at how dynamic all of these all of these shots are. That's what makes Trigger such a good show. It's like they take advantage of the medium of animation to give us like dynamic motion. Like it's it's more cartoony than Excuse me? Let me hold that thought. But yeah, what I was saying earlier is that Trigger uses the medium of animation so well just to like bring it seems a little bit more cartoony, but like that's the point, right? If you're gonna make an animation, like lean into it. Bring things to life. You know, do exaggerated motions, stuff that you can't do in real life. Alright, what up y'all? It's the homie Dame. What up, Patreon? Welcome back to Delicious and Dungeon. This is episode four. Let's get into it. Um, you know what actually? For this one, we're gonna do something a bit different, cause I I I just um I gotta try the English dub, man. Because I heard, well for one. ProZD voices Senshi, I think. But also, I heard that Marcel was voiced by Emily Rudd, I think, who plays Nami in the live-action One Piece. So I don't know, that might be cool. We'll go left. There are golems down that other corridor. Why does he sound like his nose is congested? He sounds like me. My base camp. It's not much, but make yourselves to home. <laughs> Dude, wait. It's... Pro ZD, shout out to the shout out to the Asian homie, man. Cause I saw his tweet where it's like Senshi doesn't move his mouth, right? So that he can deliver his lines all crazy. Yeah, like there's no mouth movements to sync. That's an affront to farming and to magic scholaring too. Uh, I mean, it's it's alright. Let me. All I'm saying is, next episode I will be switching back to Japanese. It'd be faster with magic. How can you like golems and be anti-magic? Every time you do a thing the easy way, it dulls your skill for doing it. Uh, no comment, y'all. No comment. I'm sure she's doing her best. Why do you go to all this trouble to live down here? No offense, but life's easier up top. 
I'm trying to live off the grid. I don't want those 5G waves giving me Alzheimer's or whatever they say it does. If you want to trade something, bring gold! Ew, I hate how this guy looks like exactly like me. That was an absolutely insane episode. It was like a racism, a serious racism subplot. <laughs> but like... I mean, the message is true. Food and, you know, sharing your culture does bring people together, but... <laughs> They're like, you murdered my people. Let's make bread together. This show is the greatest anime of all time. Why is somebody's fursona here? Bro, look at him. Oh, hell not. Nah. Lock up whoever made this. Bro. <laughs> Y'all can't tell me that I'm not the only one who thinks that that, Sib that Siberian Husky walking on two legs doesn't look insane. Bro, look at it. And it's got like toes too, normal human toes. Whenever it says dialogue, I'm gonna f trip out, bro. Am I just being racist towards whatever race that, <laughs> that fursona is? I can't look at anything else on the screen besides this walking Siberian Husky. Why did it just talk like a distinguished gentleman? What a good boy, I guess. Oh man. I don't even know what that all that was about. So that's that. Delicious in Dungeon, Dungeon Meshi, whatever you want to call it. Um It's really good so far. You should watch it. It's very strange, very quirky, very off the wall sometimes, but hey, it's better than some bog standard generic show. We get a million of those every anime season, so it's nice to switch it up. But yeah, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe and leave a comment below which dish from Delicious in Dungeon you would like to cook or eat or something. Otherwise, that's the video. Peace. When are we going to get a version of the Free Ren Burger pick, but for Marcel? I can't be the only one who wants it, right? Give us the Elf Burger.